mental illness hits all of us. You're not afraid to say someone has cancer. They're not afraid to say they have diabetes or AIDS or whatever it is. We're aware. We have to think of mental illness as stemming from uh, an organ in the skull, just like we, we have problems with organs in our abdomen, like our chest and liver. You do have a tendency to kind of blame yourself in a way because you think you have control. You know, you're the parent, you're the child. You think that there's something you can do, right? It's an illness for everybody that can afflict any family at any time. But when it's something like mental health, mental illness creeping in, we have to get away from the stigma that, that having mental illness is, is uh, crazy time. You, you can't see it. it it's, it's, in, it's almost like it's there, but it's invisible. It's just something that is, is treatable. My name is Janice. My name is Mitch. My name is Douglas. I'm Frank. I have a son, he's 20. He has schizophrenia. I have a son with uh, schizoaffective uh, disease. I have a 22-year-old daughter diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. I have a stepson, Joey, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia. It's more than just psychosis. People with schizophrenia have a myriad of, of problems. And the brain is an organ, like the liver, like the kidneys, like the heart. It weighs three pounds. It's the consistency of tofu. There's 600 different neurotransmitters in the brain, and a lot can go awry. Concentration and uh, memory. Uh, and they also have difficulty sometimes in uh, social interactions. I often refer to mental illness as the whisper illness. It's an illness that afflicts many millions of people, but nobody really wants to talk about it until it afflicts them. A lot of people would rather be homeless than admit that they have schizophrenia or bipolar disorder and go for treatment. The same uh, attitude, stigma, was attached to AIDS and even before that with cancer. People were afraid to talk about cancer. I, I took her right into the emergency room and when they asked me why I was there and what was wrong with my 14-year-old daughter, I just told them that I don't know what's wrong with her. I, that's why I brought her here for you to find out. I want them to be able to talk freely about their illness and say, yeah, I was really sick from the time I was 16 till I was 25. I'm a lot better today. Let me tell you my story. My story might help you. I was heartbroken. I was, I was devastated. Uh, what do I hope that this film will, will accomplish? Is letting people know that mental illness can be in any household. Every single family is hit with something. We're all not perfect. Hopefully there's, there's a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel, there's a rainbow. More people come to understand that, that mental illness is a lot more prevalent in our society than we want to realize. You know, there is no health without mental health. There is no family health without mental health in that family. I think it's important that family members realize that with really good treatment and supportive families, people with schizophrenia can do a lot better. Hi, my name is Jim Likens and I'm the director for The Green Bench. The Green Bench is a short film authored by Diane Sherlock. It's the heart-wrenching story of a mother searching for answers for her undiagnosed mentally ill son. The Green Bench started off as a narrative, and it's moved into a cause, a cause to help show how common mental illness can be and the effects it can have on loved ones and families. We hope that the interviews gave you some insight into this world and why we care so much about this project. We hope that you'll join us in our effort to get this film made. Thanks.